how did this become the first photo that in this video series that I'm recreating? How, why did I pick this one? What's it all about? There's a rich photographic history in Tasmania. BD Studio has thousands of photos and the collection's been handed down to me. Let me show you some things about Tasmania that have been forgotten. G'day and welcome to Forgotten Tasmania. I'm John Stevenson. The thing about the Beatty collection is there's thousands of negatives, all in paper bags with just a four digit number written on them. It's a bit like a lucky dip, you never know what you're going to get. Well today's negative is number 936. So this one's got an amazing story to tell. It's a little uh, four and a half by uh, six inch negative and let's get into it now. The bag says Elizabeth and Macquarie Streets and nothing else. But I can tell you from living in Hobart all my life that that was taken from the roof of the old hydro building on the corner of Elizabeth and Davy Streets. And that's now the service centre for the City of Hobart, or the Hobart City Council as we like to call them. I can't tell any more just looking at it, so it's time to talk to a historian and see what we can find out. Tasmanian historians are wonderful people, and when you get them talking they love to tell stories. And there's usually more comes out than I'm looking for. So in this case I've ended up with three stories, or three episodes, all on one conversation. In the photo, the GPO clock says it's 11.50am, or 10 minutes to midday, giving us a time for the photograph. And historian Colin Dennison dated the photograph at 1948. Immediately that tells me a lot about the photographer. Mr Beattie passed away in 1930, and my grandfather Arch, or Pop as I call him, did most of the landscape and commercial photography because my father Alberto, or Bill as we call him, concentrated on portrait work. Pop often left his car or camera bag or other things in shot. That was a bit of a trademark of his. So the thing I don't see in this picture that I'm expecting is a car. <laughs> there are lots of cars and that helped Colin date the photo, but there's not one there that looks like my pops. Franklin Square is totally obscured by trees, so there must have been a lot more trees and vegetation there than there is today. There's also a couple of huge trees outside the town hall building. To recreate this photo, I'm gonna to have to get Jim, that's my photographer, and myself up on the roof of the council building. There was some back and forth between Jim and myself about how high up we needed to be. I'd thought about the balcony, but Jim said it looked more like the roof. Then I took a test shot from the roof and Jim said that looked too high and maybe it was the balcony after all. Jim's the perfectionist. He wants to get the spot right to like this much. You know, a meter off is, is too much for Jim. It's gotta be spot on. Uh, I'm more the kind of getting it done kind of guy, <laughs> but you know, we can't compromise too much either. So it's gonna be a tricky one to do. Luckily, through my wife, I know the general manager of the council, and he's very kindly introduced me to someone who can get us on the roof. Now, they can't let just anyone up on the roof, so we had to do some safety training and some uh, safety procedures, and we've got that out of the road, so it looks like we're a go. But there's a problem. I'm scheduled for surgery. I've got a collapsed disc in my neck, and apart from causing pain, I'm also losing some feeling in my hands and starting to drop things. And when you're working with glass plate negatives that are like 100 plus years old, uh, it's disastrous if you start dropping things. So we're going to have to postpone the shoot. I sailed through my surgery and recovered more quickly than I expected, but now Jim has the flu and he's out of action. It seems this recreation may not happen soon. Just as Jim got better, the weather started to fail. As Tasmania moves into winter and the dark mofo banners start coming up, so the temperature drops and the rain sets in. We need overcast skies to get the right light, but we can't go on the roof in the rain, it's just too dangerous. And another problem, the day before the shoot and it's pouring with rain. So here we are on the site ready to go uh, up there on the roof, but of course this is the day before the shoot and it's pouring with rain. So it's not looking good for a shoot tomorrow. Jim's just uh, sent me a text to say he's shifted the time a bit so we can be closer to the actual time on the GPO clock, but um, rain's forecast for tomorrow. So fingers crossed, see what happens. The weather gods have been kind and the day of the shoot there's no rain. We've got nice overcast skies, conditions are perfect, we're good to go. Our guide from the council is the Keeper of Halls. That's a funny title, it reminds me of Harry Potter and the Keeper of the Keys. Dougal escorts us to the roof and we get plenty of time to set up before the GPO clock hits 10 too. That's our shutter moment. To find the spot I use an app called Repro. It lets me overlay the original photo on the iPhone screen while using the camera to watch live. The iPhone camera lens is quite different to the camera lens that my pop would have used, so I can't get the overlay 
This is where Jim comes in with his PhD in mathematics and astrophysics. With maths and a little logic, Jim places the tripod in the corner of the safety platform. He'd really like to be half a smidge on the other side of the safety barrier, but we can't go there without a harness and a working at heights permit and some cripplingly expensive insurance. Jim lines up the shot using landmarks in the original photo, like the windows on the GPO and the edge of the flagpole on the CML building. He wants to use the hills behind to get a really distant waypoint, but some bugger went and built the AMP building right in his line of sight. The original photo has trams and trolley buses. We don't have those, but we can hope for an opportune metro bus. Unfortunately, I don't have enough pull to charter the buses to be in exactly the right spots at the right time. We have to leave that to chance. But we've got a one minute window while the hands of the clock are in the right position. Fortune favours the bold and somehow we lucked it. We scored two buses. Of course, one is going in the opposite direction to the photo, but Macquarie Street isn't a two-way street anymore, so we'd have to close off streets and get special permits to do that. So there you have it, Jim's modern recreation and my pop's original circa 1948 photo. A forgotten story for your enjoyment, thank you. There's so much more to see. I can't wait to tell you what I've found. So please subscribe to this channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, feel free to hit me up in the comments with anything you want to say. Um, the more people that subscribe, the more people will find out about this channel and ultimately that's how I'm going to fund this collection. So your subscriptions are really important to me. Thanks very much.